Hey, what is going on, guys? In this video today, we're going to be doing an update of my sensitivity, settings, dead zones, and a few other things as well. I plan to release this about 12 hours before the beginning of Season 8, so it's safe to say that these will be my settings for at least the beginning of the new season. I feel like I say this pretty much every time I release a sensitivity and settings video, but I do apologize for delaying this so long. My last update video like this was all the way back at the beginning of Season 7, which was pretty much three whole months ago, so it's definitely been a while. And my goal going forward is to try to make it so that I never go more than two months without a settings update. Plus, even if you're someone that doesn't really care about my settings, I think this video will still be pretty entertaining for you because of the gameplay. In the last week or so, I've uploaded two 34 kill games, which was my personal record for kills in a single Fortnite game. But I recently broke that record with the 38 kill gameplay that you're currently watching. I'm really hoping that with the shield and mats per kill, I'll be able to get a 40 bomb sometime in the near future, but we'll just have to see about that. So, I think the majority of this video will be showcasing all the settings, and then with whatever time is left, we'll break down the end of the actual gameplay. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, let's start this off with what you guys probably want to see most, my updated sensitivity. I don't think a ton has changed from the last video, but I guess even the smallest changes can make a significant difference. So my X sensitivity is 0.653, and my Y sensitivity is 0.600. I think my last settings update was before they even added the extra decimal place to sensitivities, so that kinda explains why it's 0.653. Targeting slash ADS sensitivity is kinda the same deal at 0.427. I had it on 0.43 when it only went to two decimal places, and then when they changed it to three, it was defaultly at 0.427, so I just kept it. And my scope sensitivity, which was previously at 0.40, is now at 0.398. Now, I think this is easily the most interesting change I made with my sensitivity since the last update. I'm now all the way up at a 1.962 building sensitivity multiplier. So even though my non-ADS aiming X and Y sensitivity are pretty much 6.5 and 6, my building X and Y sensitivity are all the way up at 12.8 and 11.8. And the reasoning behind this is basically, since your building sensitivity is no longer tied to your aiming sensitivity, the higher you can control, the better. I think in general, the speed of high sensitivity building is a tad bit overpowered, but as long as it's not too fast for you, it definitely can't hurt to be on as high of a building sensitivity as possible. However, I do want to give a word of caution to the players watching this that play on console. Since you guys are going to be getting much lower FPS while playing, as well as other various connection and graphical disadvantages, that high of a building sensitivity may not work as well for you as it does for me. I would recommend gradually working your building sensitivity multiplier up a few decimal points each day, then if it ever gets to the point where it feels like you can't control it and it's simply too high for you, bump it down a little and then stick with that. So I think that covers all things sensitivity, and now let's move on to all of the various settings I use for Fortnite. Now for the control options section of settings, I honestly don't think I've changed a single thing since my last video. The not super obvious important ones from here in my opinion are edit mode aim assist off, reset building choice on, builder pro builds immediately on, controller hold edit time doesn't matter if you use any kind of binds with instant editing, and finally I have vibration off. Other than that, I think the rest of the control option settings you've seen are pretty self-explanatory, and I'm guessing yours are incredibly similar to mine. Plus, even if you have something like Sprint Cancels Reloading On when I have it off, or Tap to Search Slash Interact Off when I have it on, it isn't a big deal at all. Those settings are pretty much just personal preference at the end of the day. One thing I do want to quickly mention are the shadows and motion blur options which are apparently coming to console Fortnite at the beginning of Season 8. When that happens, I would recommend turning both of those settings to off. Just as a frame of reference, I'll quickly show you guys the PC section of my Fortnite settings. And as you can see, I have both shadows and motion blur turned off. 
They lower your FPS, and in general make it a little harder for you to quickly locate enemies in certain situations. Now we move on to the most important new setting that I don't think I've ever shared with you guys, my dead zone setting. In case you don't know what the dead zone option means for a controller, it basically represents how much you need to move your thumbstick before the game actually registers the movement. A really high dead zone means you'll have to move the stick a somewhat considerable amount for the game to register any movement, and a really low dead zone means it'll register even the slightest of thumbstick movement. And since the Xbox and PS4 thumbsticks are different shapes and sizes, they have different default dead zones. And what's even more interesting is that controller on PS4, controller on Xbox, and controller on PC all have different and unique default dead zone values. I believe that if you play with a PS4 controller on console, your default dead zone values will be 0.12 and 0.12, an Xbox controller on console will be 0.20 and 0.20, and then a controller on PC is 0.24 and 0.27. Now, me personally, I play with an Xbox controller on PC, and my dead zones are the default 0.24 on my left thumbstick and 0.27 on my right thumbstick. The good news about that is, since it's just the default value, you can copy it no matter what controller and platform you play on. I simply tried the default dead zones out when I first saw the update, felt pretty comfortable with it, and decided that basically, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. However, I've recently seen a few controller pros talking about how lower dead zones are better because they actually offer you more control while aiming. I know PS4 on PC guys like Issa and Beanie, for example, have their dead zones down to right around 0.10. Now, it is worth noting that having more control over your aim isn't always a good thing. For example, playing on 10-10 sensitivity gives you more control over your aim than playing on 6-6, but that actually ends up being too much control and way too fast for most people. However, I'll likely begin to slowly experiment with bringing down my dead zone values as Season 8 goes on, and my guess is that if I end up liking it, I'll ultimately go to somewhere in the .15 to 0.20 range on both thumbsticks. But for now, default is what I'm sticking with, and for all of you guys watching, I wouldn't recommend going too far away from whatever the default value of your controller's dead zones are. So that's about as in-depth of an explanation of controller dead zones as I can possibly give, and hopefully all of you guys understand it now. And the final settings I want to quickly share are my custom controller binds and some other various equipment stuff. I haven't changed my binds in literally 4-5 to five months now, but just in case you're new around here, I use an Xbox Elite controller with one paddle on the lower left hand side of the controller. Because of this, I have edit bound to A, jump bound to right on the D-pad, and confirm edit bound to B. Then, I program the paddle on the back of the controller to be right on the D-pad, therefore I'm actually jumping by pressing the paddle on the back of my controller. And if you're someone who doesn't play with an Xbox Elite or Scuff controller, I would recommend binding Edit to Y, Confirm Edit to Y, and then make pulling out your pickaxe right on the D-pad. I do not use Control Freaks on either of my controller's thumbsticks, I use Astro A40s as my headset, and my gaming monitor is a 26-inch BenQ. I'm not sure the exact model number, but I doubt it really matters, and I haven't changed any of the graphical settings on that monitor. So, I think that covers everything you guys need to know about all of my sensitivities and settings going into Fortnite Season 8. Now, hopping into the gameplay, we're currently at 34 kills with 4 enemies left. And in the gameplay, I believed it was a 1v4 situation, and that's actually what it ends up being. Luckily, what was really big for me here was the fact that these guys were pretty split apart as a team. You're gonna basically see there's never a time in this 1v4 fight where I'm fighting more than one person at once. It's kinda like Call of Duty zombies where they're just coming one at a time over and over again, and making it relatively easy for me to deal with them individually. So what was looking like a super intense intimidating 1v4 about 30 seconds ago is now a much more manageable 1v2, and as you're gonna see in about a second here, is actually a 1v1.
So 37 kills, one enemy left. I do a good job of getting a little bit of chip damage here, and we're actually going to skip ahead just to the very end of the fight. This guy obviously isn't the best player in the world. He's not really building. He's not really even locating me in the fight. So all I have to do is just keep a little bit of high ground over him, and that's all she wrote. 38 kills solo squads game, and my new personal record in a single Fortnite game. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you watched the entire thing, be sure to let me know with a comment down in the comment section below. I want to know what sensitivities and dead zones you guys are rocking with going into Season 8. You can let me know your X and Y, ADS, building sensitivity, or anything you want. Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, do whatever the heck you want, and I will catch you guys next time.